Hello, my 3D parent peeps. I'm here with the Sparks powered by Creality i7. And today we're gonna have a quick look at it. But first, let's discuss the elephant in the room. It kinda looks like this. However, this is the Creality Ender 3 Pro. Hey Google, when did the Creality Ender 3 release? The original Creality Ender 3 was released in March 2018. Alrighty then. There will be a two color CFS mini version. However, this is the full four color version. Right here is the Creality CFS Lite. And when they say light, they're not kidding. This thing weighs like a couple of ounces. Matter of fact, the whole machine is very light. Let's have a look at it. Here is the inside of the CFS Lite. You'll notice instead of having motor driven rollers, it's just these free rolling rollers. Inside this CFS, there are little compartments that you can stick desk impacts in, one for each spool. Loading is easy. You slip the filament in and feed it into the tube above. Slide the filament in, insert it into this tube. There's no pushing, no friction, no resistance. It takes it very easily and automatically feeds it up into the machine and reads the filament. Let's stick four RFID hypers in there. Toss a desiccant pack in there and feed the fourth color. We've now got a four color CFS light. You might recall the original CFS has these really difficult to reach and press buttons on the bottom for releasing the filament. The CFS light has moved them to the front. They're very easy to reach, very easy to press. Simply depress the button, pull the filament out. Here is the back side of the CFS light. You'll notice no hubs, no buffers, no splitters, no four ways. Here on the bottom, absolutely nothing to deal with. All of your feeders, couplers, releases are right here across the front and top of the CFS light, making things a lot more easy to service. Here on the top of each feeder is a simple coupler. You depress the button and remove the PTFE. It's very easy. These couplers work really well. Also, this entire unit easily snaps up for service. This is the Sparks tool head. This is a four to one splitter. You've seen these before, but this is just the way the industry is going. Just like textured PEI, linear rails, direct drive, all of the manufacturers, any cubic, bamboo, creality, they are going in this direction. It's not necessarily a copycat. It's an accepted universal change in how 3D printers are being designed. Behind it is the hot end harness. Remember when these used to be long and wide and stiff and rigid? Now it's one simple pliable cable mounted to the hot end. Here is the tool head. The cover simply snaps right off. It couldn't be easier. Inside, you'll recognize the spinning logo. We've seen spinning logos on the Bamboo A1, the high combo, and it's now here on the i7. It serves no purpose. It's just a fun little cosmetic. What is actually quite nice is the hot end. Here is the silicone boot. It pinches off easily. This is the locking mechanism. You flip it up, unhook it, bring the nozzle down and forward. That's it. That's the entire removal process and you do it cold. Unlike the competitors, Flash Forge and Acubic Bamboo, all of which have gone magnetic, Creality has gone with this locking mechanism. And there's no two ways around it. It's really nice. The install is easy and it's extremely secure thanks to the locking clip. The silicone boot pushes on with ease as well. This is a really nice hot end. I'm very pleased with it. 
Here's another look at the side. You'll see it unlocks. This little clip comes forward. This little boot comes off. The hot end comes out. The hot end goes back in. The latch goes on, you depress, and it forces the hot end upward, ensuring you have a good seal. Someone said, how long till it leaks? I really don't see that being a problem. Here is the cutting arm. This will be very familiar to you also. It uses a simple push rod. Yeah, it looks just like the A1, but how many ways can we design a cutter lever and a little pole. The only thing I really care about is that it works. Creality did design the cutter blade and the lever for quick swap. I'm going to leave mine alone for today. We'll do all that another time. For a budget beginner machine, we have a really nice shroud. Remember back in the S1 days when you had a 3D print like a Zoof shroud and it gave you these multiple vents? Well, now we're getting them stock. That's pretty nice. Of course, this all comes down to how well the fan works. And it does look like there's a pretty beefy fan here on the tool head. I kind of like how it says sparks at the bottom. Here, you can also see the nozzle. Speaking of harnesses, this is the hotbed harness. And this is the harness connection at the hotbed. Remember when they looked like this? Boy, it wasn't that long ago, guys. Here is the poop chute. I really like the way there's no poop chute. It simply cleans and flings, clean and fling, clean and fling. That's it, the clean and fling system. I just named it. You heard it here first. On the chute systems, a lot of times the filament gets dragged onto the bed stuck in the chute, clogs up and ruins your print. These clean the nozzle and fling the poop away from the printer. I'd love to see enclosed printers get to a point where this is what they're doing. Clean the nozzle, fling the filament away from the printer. Speaking of cleaning the nozzle, the i7 has the toothbrush cleaner built into the bed, not the heat plate. The printer itself has a replaceable nozzle cleaner right here. Staying here at the build plate, Creality has not invented the wheel. This is very similar to the mounting methods of other printers. However, somehow Creality has made it so, so easy. On my A1 and many of my other printers, I do have alignment issues. I always get it wrong. It's always the littlest bit left, the littlest bit right, the littlest bit forward. This one, for some reason, somehow it's like magic. It's literally almost impossible to put this print bed on wrong. It's so easy, even a caveman can do it. I'm very, very pleased with the bed mounting system on the i7. All the manufacturers have moved to stainless rods. Our hot end rides on everybody's favorite linear rails. Remember the days of having to install these yourself? Your Sparks i7 comes with them. I know we live in a complainer society, but just a few short years ago, this printer cost more than the i7, and we had belts and palm wheels. Hey guys, what's all that black dust, and why are my palm wheels wearing out? Is that normal? If you know, you know. Here on the front of the housing of the i7 is a multicolor LED status light. It's super cool. It looks beautiful in person, and I really like this feature. Just like its older brothers, the i7 also has automatic calibration that includes automatic Z offset, auto bed leveling, input shaping, all of these things that used to be manual years ago in recent time have become automated and the Sparks comes with all those fancy automated toys. That means auto bed leveling, Z offset, input shaping are all done by itself. No accessories, no manual tuning. 
Recent lower end machines have come with a G sensor that you must install and use for input shaping. The i7 has the G sensor built in. You might remember the G sensor looked something like this and you had to screw it on or tape it on to both the tool head and the hot end. And then it had all these crazy USBs at the end that had to be plugged into the screen. Well, this is no longer a thing. Hiding here is the camera. This camera can be used for time lapse and video monitoring during print. It comes with a built in privacy protector. Here on the side of the i7 is a six pin connector for the CFS and a USB A input. This can be used for USB thumb drives. I suggest a small sand disc like this one. And there we have our first decent look at the Sparks powered by Creality i7. To my surprise, this is a really nice little printer. There are some similarities to a certain other printer. There are some questions as to why do we need another bed slinger? However, it's a low price point. The marketing is very specifically targeted to the newer casual user. And to my surprise, it's a very well thought out and nicely functioning printer. Creality may have solved some of the more complicated issues we've seen with the CFS and CFS related machines, namely jamming and issues created by the CFS itself. This very simple CFS light is extremely easy to work with and extremely easy to service. The machine itself is full of all of the modern features that you would see on a current 3D printer. It doesn't appear that a ton of corners were cut, which is something I was expecting. All in all, I'm having a lot of fun with the i7, which is a surprise to me, and quite possibly you might too. In the coming weeks and months, we'll find out what the i7's really made of. For now, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm Mr. Greg. This is the Sparks i7, and you're on 3D Rundown.